This is Baja SAE Shop Talk, the official podcast of the Baja SAE series. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Shop Talk, the Baja SAE podcast. I'm Mike Sork, podcast and video producer at the SAE CDS series, and we're here with another preview for Baja Rochester, New York, coming up here uh, in June, giving you all the details here. And maybe you're listening on the way, either way, hopefully you're prepared for this. And we got a great crew with us today to talk about. First of all, Marty Gordon is with us, chief organizer of the event. How you doing, Marty? I'm doing well. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Also, Steve Skursky, the co-organizer of the uh, Dynamic Events. How you doing, Mike? Hey, Steve. And Andrew Beckman, Endurance Captain. Hey, everybody. And, of course, Sarah Guffey with us as well, the Baja SAE Event Coordinator. How you doing, Sarah? Hey, everybody. Well, of course, back to Rochester. I'm excited to go back to this event, uh, one that I got to attend the first year. I got to work with you guys on the video side and podcasting. So, uh, first of all, how long has uh, everybody been involved with Baja SAE? Let's start with you, Marty. I mean, you've been, you've been at this for a good long time. Oh, boy. Yeah, I've been involved... Um indirectly back through the 70s um and at rit i'm starting my 25th year of involvement in baja and formerly mini baja and uh had a great time doing it excellent what about you steve uh i've been involved with baja since 2011 uh on the rit team and then now as a, a national tech inspector and organizer for the rochester event excellent andrew I've been involved since 2010, uh, went to RIT, and then organized last RIT race and tech inspection. Excellent. And just to round out, Sarah, of course, has been at this for, I believe, four years now. Is that right? Yep. This is my fourth season. This event is kind of different than the other ones, that there's actually two locations across the days. Uh, first of all, the first two days happen at the Gordon Fieldhouse at RIT's campus. Uh, what can uh, students expect when we get out there? Well, uh, the one nice thing about our event, uh, the first two days, uh, all of the events are inside a large field house. And um, we are expecting uh, extended forecasts as it's supposed to be pretty wet. So uh, the events are inside the Gordon field house and the pits are located just outside the field house in a paved parking lot. So we shouldn't have any issues with mud uh, or other debris on the first couple days. Uh, the other th neat thing about our event, it's uh, one of the few Baja events that is uh, housed on a, a college campus. Uh, it used to be that most of the events were housed on college campuses. And nowadays, we're usually at a remote site for the whole event. So it gives you a chance to see the RIT campus. So if anybody's thinking about grad school, um, it's a good way to check check it out and also very close to downtown rochester if i recall yeah I, rochester is very small so everything is close to downtown rochester um the other nice thing about uh, being in rochester there's no very little traffic so i think folks that are, are used to the larger metro, met, metropolitan areas um are going to be nice and happy not having to sit in their vehicles for too long and i hope i don't jinx myself by saying that but normally traffic is not an issue uh, Sarah, will the entry check process and registration be uh, similar to what we've seen in Tennessee and California this year? Uh, yes, it will be exactly the same as what you're used to um, from the past two events. You won't be able to actually go to engine check until you've registered with us at the SAE registration desk. Um, at, once you come to the registration desk, you'll be given a sticker that is, is your proof of registration. And then you'll take that sticker and uh, put it on your vehicle, and then you'll go to engine check. So if you go to engine check and you don't have a sticker on your vehicle, you're going to be turned away. Um, we have people that walk the line on occasion. Usually it's Sam, um, and he'll kick you out, and you'll have to get to the back of the line. So it's definitely important um, that you show up to registration. If, if you are hoping to be one of those first 25 teams to get through engine checks so that you're one of the first 25 teams through tech inspection, it's important that you make sure that you have all of your paperwork and everything prepared and ready to roll and that you're one of those first, first teams in line. Um, but you need to be paddocked before you come to registration. So that's the little caveat to that. 
Excellent. Anything else they need to know about registration uh, as far as the, the their fast track or anything else? The only thing I really have to say is that registration is the same as usual. Um, you know, you'll get your wristbands and your giveaways, which this year at Rochester, we're giving away fanny packs. So hopefully you like that. <laughs> but um, make sure that the, the problem that we seem to have each year and at each event is that students will come up with their fast track roster printed and for whatever reason, they don't sign it ahead of time. When you fill out your roster online at SAE.org, it generates everybody on your team's information into um, a spreadsheet. And right next to it is a place for you to sign. You need to make sure everybody on your team signs that page before you bring it up to us. It seems to be the most common mistake with registration. But other than that, everything's pretty much the same. As far as uh, sales finals, uh, will they be similar to the other events in 2019? Will they be available for other teams to attend or, or any uh, pre-recording like in California? Yeah, the uh, we are going to have sales finals. Uh, we've actually had sales finals uh, the previous time we hosted as well. And those will be in the Engel Auditorium on RIT's campus. There's plenty of room to watch and teams are encouraged to come and, and cheer on uh, the sales finalists. It won't, it won't be recorded like it was in California though. So it'll just be in person that you can come and watch. No recordings will be online. And that is right on campus there. So it's not a distance like we saw in California either. Nope. It's a short walk, just, uh, you know, a few buildings over from the field house. Of course, being a, a two location event uh, like this one is, uh, what is the process going to be like from Friday to Saturday uh, when teams move uh, from the paddock locations at RIT uh, back to uh, Hogback Hill? So the first thing I need to say is uh, Hogback Hill is out near Palmyra, New York. It's about 40 miles uh, or 46 minutes. It looks like the quickest route is to hop on a New York State Thruway and head east. So um, the one thing that teams will have to remember is on Friday, uh, the RIT pits will be closing and the Hogback Hill pits will be opening. Now, of course, there are design finals going on between 5.30 and 7 p.m. on Friday evening. If your team makes it into the design finals, you will be getting a reserved paddock location at Hogback Hill. The rest of the teams will be permitted to enter the Hogback Hill pit parking no earlier than 7 p.m. And that's critical. Uh, we are not permitted to block the roadways near Hogback Hill Motocross. And if we see teams out there prior to 7 p.m., we are going to tell you to go away, uh, drive away, and come back at 7 p.m. Uh, pit entry will be, you know, first come, first serve, with the exception with the exception of those teams that I mentioned that are going to be in design finals. the the other The other thing of note out at Hogback Hill, uh, Steve, I, I think uh, Steve is really in charge of the pit parking out there. So I don't know if Steve wanted to chime in with what that looks like. Um, I think that the the paddock parking uh, will be very similar to any any team that made it out to Rochester in 2016. Um, as far as that goes, you know, we're going to bring the trucks in, uh, try to get them parked. Anybody with a, a truck and a trailer, we're going to ask that they unhook their truck from their trailer um, and then move that elsewhere so we can really pack the teams in a little tighter um, due to the weather forecast that we're looking at. And, and the uh, the surface um, out at Hogback Hill for paddock parking, it's going to be grass. Uh, the road leading up to the paddock is a gravel road, and it is up a hill. So again, you know, depending on weather, we're going to do our best to try to give each spot, each team a dry location to work, uh, at least dry on the ground. So we don't want to put you in a quagmire. Um, but we just ask that you be patient, uh, you know, in, in terms of coming in and getting your rig uh, parked and located. And please, please follow the directions of our parking volunteers. 
And of course, there is the mandatory team captain and advisors meeting. Uh, how mandatory is that, and why is it so important for all teams to have a representation at this meeting? Well, I, you know, as an organizer, uh, that's where we can make sure that information is passed directly to the students. I know there's a, a excellent um, app on your phone for communications, but sometimes if if you have questions. It does take some time to get answers if, if you're just trying to use the app. At these meetings, you're able to ask questions live. The other reason it's important is at these meetings, uh, I believe SAE, and, and Sarah, you can maybe talk about this. Uh, SAE has started to give away uh, priority registrations for next year's event. So uh, those are always given away as well. But it's important for communications. It's important for safety uh, if there's any changes. And also we want to know if, if from the teams if there's anything uh, that seems to be amiss that, so we can fix it before it becomes too big of a problem. Yeah, for sure. Um, all the things Marty said, but also um, we definitely this season have been giving out some pre-registration passes. Um, they're not free registrations, but at each team meeting, um, we've been giving out three total at the whole event pre-registration passes for the event that correlates to the event next year. So uh, Rochester is, is considered our Midwest event. So we will be giving out three passes for the Midwest event for 2020. Uh, we haven't announced that location yet. But um, we usually give out one pass per meeting. So it's definitely some extra incentive to come to the meetings. Excellent. And of course, uh, especially with the last couple of days being kind of a more remote location, what, what is the lunch situation going to be over the uh, event this year? We are encouraging teams to uh, bring their own food. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to secure uh as many local sponsors as we have in the past. Um, so therefore folks that have been coming to our event or have been to our event in the past know that we were sort of known with starting a trend of providing uh, free food for the teams. Uh, this event, there will only be free food, free food at the banquet on Sunday. Um, the track is quite a ways uh, away from I'll say civilization. There is a small town, I, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes away. So it's not as bad as say Lebec, California. Um, and there are pizza places in town, but I think it would be best if teams come prepared to make their own sandwiches. Uh, I believe we are allowing grilling as long as SAE allows grilling in the pits. Um, there's no prohibition against doing that. So if you want to make hots and hamburgers, that's also an option. Uh, there will also be food trucks on site. Uh, I believe we're going to have four food trucks. There'll, there'll be Boy Scouts grilling uh, hot dogs, and they've done that in the past. Um, or, again, bring or pack your own lunch. Um, and as a last resort, you can leave the site and go into town and get lunch. But, um, you know, that's not preferred. Sunday night, as I mentioned, is the awards banquet. Uh, those are free for any participant and all the volunteers. If students want to purchase extra banquet tickets for their parents or friends, those will be available uh, near the registration tables on, I believe, Thursday through Saturday. And tickets will be $20 a piece for that banquet. Excellent. Are we going to have a return of the ice sculpture from the past? Yes, you, you remember our ice sculpture. So <laughs> we started this tradition back in 2005 uh, of having a Baja ice sculpture. And yes, we are planning on having the famous Baja ice sculpture at the banquet. So if you've never seen that, you should come and take a picture by the, by the ice sculpture. Uh, we'll also be giving away, uh, you know, Briggs, I'm sure we'll be giving away a generator and a pressure washer. And I'm trying to talk Sam into saving one of those uh, pre-registration pre -registration, um, vouchers to be given away at the banquet as well. Uh, and the food is really good. 
And it's one of the last, you know, I would say off-site awards banquets. There used to be a lot of these, and most of the event organizers will hold it on site. We don't have enough room to hold it at uh, Hogback Hill. And we also like to bring students back to campus uh, sort of to wrap the event up. Uh, and there, one of the reasons we do that is RIT donates all of the space for this event. They, we do not get charged for the use of the field house. Uh, and the, the field house, you know, that's a $20,000 expense right there. So RIT is very gracious with us. And, and the least we could do is, you know, bring the students back to campus for that closing banquet. So I, I encourage everybody to please plan on attending the banquet. Uh, if you're heading uh, back west from the event, you're going in the right direction. And if you happen to go be going east, it's not that much out of your way. So that's my recommendation. Having attended it before, and of course going into it, I had a friend that uh, attended uh, Baja RIT, and I was like, hey, you got to check out the ice sculpture. So a really good event. I enjoyed it a couple years ago here. So uh, will there be uh, uh, any T-shirts uh, of any sort on sale for students in addition to the sponsored um, SolidWorks event shirts that we usually see? No, we're not planning on selling uh, T-shirts. I will say, though, if we have any extra volunteer T-shirts, uh, those will also be given given away at the banquet. Um, we have a philosophy. We try to give as much back to the students as we can. Uh, our event helps support the, the famous um, uh, service truck, <laughs> which is really the RIT uh, Penske at the other events when we don't host. So we buy materials for that truck to bring to races so we can give away supplies to other teams. Uh, so we really... Uh, we won't have anything for sale other than, you know, the extra banquet tickets for friends or family. Excellent. Let's bring the attention back to Hogback Hill and those uh, dynamic days a little bit here. Uh, Stephen Andrew, can you tell us what's new uh, out at Hogback this year? I remember last time we were there, there was some really interesting and inventive uh, things you guys were doing with tracks out there. Yeah. So uh, this year, I don't know that we have um, any major changes uh, from, from the last event. We're going to move S&T um, to farther up on the hill out on the actual MX track, um, try to get it out of that, that slop hole of a uh, mini course that, that seems to form there when it rains. Well, well, the, Hey, the hill climb is a little different though, isn't it, Steve? Uh, yeah, I guess the, the hill climb is going to be, um, moved slightly from where it was in 2016. Um, so it won't be as much of an uphill acceleration, uh, as we've had in the past. Um, I don't want to disclose too much information on what's going on there. Um, but it should be more enjoyable for teams. Steve, how about how about tennis balls? Uh, Fifty thousand tennis balls on each dynamic event, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the full Grand Slam, Marty, not just the U.S. Open. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, and I, I heard I heard a rumor there might be some interesting things happening to you endurance this year as well. Yeah, so we're doing something uh, new to the series for endurance this year. So the course is starting out at about 1.4 miles um, at three hours race time into the race. So one hour remaining, we are cutting about a quarter mile out of the course in three spots. That's being done on the race clock. It's not being done on the leader. So we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Uh, we want to promote more wheel to wheel racing as less cars are on the track. And we want to give you guys a, uh, an opportunity to put some strategy into your endurance uh, plan. So can you do your fuel pits more efficiently to uh, gain on your competitors or things like that? That's the opportunity we're trying to give. Excellent. And of course, how, how do the dynamics uh, and the endurance kind of compare to what people may have already seen in California and Tennessee this year? They're going to be wet. <laughs> <laughs> We, we might be a little drier than California, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, which is ironic. We're going to be drier and warmer than California is what, is what we're hoping for. Yeah. And, and hopefully drier than Tennessee. And uh, hopefully we, we can run a full Sunday schedule. But, uh, you know, Mother Nature likes to mess with us. So we have little control over that. Absolutely. Definitely puts us out there in the, in the elements, doesn't it? It does. 
Is there anything you guys are excited for the students to experience out there at Hogback this year? So Hogback's a great site. It has uh, a great amount of terrain. It has great visibility onto a lot of the course. Um, we keep it in the, uh, we keep the race at that track for a reason. So we hope you guys enjoy that track and uh, look forward to coming back in a couple of years. Yeah, I, w- I would add that when we design, you know, when Steve and uh, Andrew and, and friends design the dynamic side, uh, they really pay attention to putting the events where they can be best seen by the teams. Because, of course, in the old days, you know, if you were on a team, you could wander around all the dynamic events. Uh, nowadays, it's very much more restricted. You have to stay behind the fencing. But we try to put the, lo- the events where the other teammates can see what's going on because we recognize that, hey, this, you know, there's a lot of people involved in these teams there's a lot of effort put into it. And if you're not able to see how your team is doing, it's a little bit frustrating. So we do take that into account. Uh, it's not to say that everything will be visible at all times, but we do try to design the events such that, you know, teammates can see how their vehicle is doing. Yeah, I believe even endurance, you can see at least probably about half of the field, if I, if I recall. Yeah, you get uh, probably somewhere around half of the course that you can see. Uh, One of the big things we had in endurance last year was the downhill logs kind of coming right into the grandstands. Uh, They're going to be shifted up a little bit, but the same spectator sport should be there. Excellent. Uh, Speaking of spectators, uh, other than those uh, restrictions, of course, we're out in the middle of nowhere. You know, what's it going to look like for parking or any other uh, things that should be considered? Yeah, I would I would suggest and I would ask, um, you know, most of the spectators are friends and family of team members. And if at all possible, you know, if you could carpool, if you could ask your parents to maybe carpool with another family, um, the fewer vehicles we get out at Hogback from spectators, the better it is for everybody, uh, especially this year with the predicted weather. Um, we're just going to have really limited parking for spectators. In the past, when the parking is filled up, we just close the site and just wave people on. So they will not even be able to come into the event. Uh, There is a parking lot, uh, probably the closest parking lot is, I would say, a mile and a half away. Uh, There are no shuttles, so people are responsible for, you know, getting themselves to the location. But again, if, if people could carpool and be conscious and, and sort of sensitive to the fact that we do have limited space for vehicles, that would be a great help. And I think the same thing goes for teams there. I know that there's some teams that, you know, bring, you know, five or six minivans to, to the event and try to space people out for the long hauls across the country. Um, but once you get here, if you could pack those a little tighter and help us save on, on parking. Steve, you know me, I'm Mr. Safety. I would say that's good as long as everybody can have a seatbelt on. Absolutely. Safety third. First. (laughs) (laughs) Steve. (laughs) Um, And then the other reminder is, uh, you know, if if you have folks coming out, make sure that they know that there's no open-toed shoes uh, permitted on site. We also discourage uh, bringing pets uh, and very small children, um, although you, you are permitted to. It's just uh, it's not really a good environment for, for pets. Um, there's a lot of loud noises. There's uh, sharp metal on the ground, obviously, you know, nuts and bolts and welding going on. So, you know, I'm a dog lover, but I would never bring my dog to a Baja event. One other thing to mention about Hogback. So for the race, we rent this private motocross club and they treat us amazingly. It's a great site for us to be at. But part of the reason we've been able to keep coming back is because we treat it well. So we ask that you extend the, you know, the same to the site, uh, use the trash cans. There's dumpsters around, things like that. And if there's a problem you see, ask somebody and we'll do what we can to help out with it. So you mentioned uh, several times a little bit about the weather, and of course uh, the the parking is going to be a situation dependent on that. Um, you know, everybody needs to plan 
impact for whatever can happen up there. Uh, what other? How is that forecast looking officially? Here we are, about a week and a half out of uh, as of this recording of getting out there on the field. Well, I I checked this morning, and there is a fifty percent chance of rain every day of the competition. Uh, and there is rain pretty much every day going into the competition. Uh, with that said, the prediction for uh, yesterday, which happened to be Memorial Day, was rain, and it was a beautiful sunny day. So you can only plan uh, for bad weather and hope for the best. Um, you know, so I would definitely plan on rain and mud. And uh, it's also not going to be much higher than 70 degrees on uh, any of the four days. So, you know, it'll probably be, you know, seventies and pretty humid. Uh, and again, it'll feel warmer than the wind out in the California desert, um, which is sort of odd, but, you know, I think people that have been to Baja events before know what to bring, um, bring a, bring rain, rain jackets and, uh, uh, umbrellas are probably not a good idea, but, but bring some sort of rain gear and, and also have a, hopefully have a warm spot for your, uh, especially on Sunday Endurance Day, um, make sure that your endurance driver has some warm clothes to put on after the event. Because even if there isn't uh, rain or mud, uh, there will be pockets of water, so they will be probably getting wet, I would guess. And call out for boots as well, uh, in, in case of the rain, too. Oh. Boots, absolutely. Um, is there any kind of a rain plan, uh, You know, anything we need to consider about any evacuation plans, if anything, if the weather should take a turn? as we've seen in the past? Well, uh, if there is, uh, you know, severe weather, which I did not see in the forecast, uh, what we've done in the past is uh, have people shelter in their vehicles. Uh, upstate New York is not really in tornado alley. Tornadoes are very rare. So the worst that uh, we usually see are thunder and lightning storms uh, and high winds. So again, um, we ask uh, you know, to pay attention to the app, if the weather is inclement, uh, we may or may not be able to run a PA system. Uh, but if you hear thunder and we hear thunder, uh, events will be stopped immediately and people will be asked to go shelter in their vehicles. And that does not mean stand under a tent. It means to get in your vehicle uh, off the ground. And speaking of that app, uh, it's been used to great effect in the the recent uh, months for weather updates. Um, Sarah, can you talk a little bit more about the significance of making sure that thing's on your phone? Uh, yes. So it's a great resource to have, not just for um, weather updates, which, like Mike said, has been crucial this year with all the <laughs> crazy weather we've had at both California and Tennessee. But um we make regular updates, um, push notifications and such on the app regarding all kinds of things. Like, for example, um, you know, if tech, tech on uh, Saturday is open by appointments only, um, and it's really, they'll keep it open until there's, there's nobody there, um, usually. But we'll, we'll make announcements if nobody's in line that tech's going to be shutting down and you know, snooze, you lose type deal. So it's not just for tech, it's for anything that we want to make a, an announcement on to make sure that students know if meeting times change, anything like that at all. So it's great to have. Um, I, I definitely think that the students that have downloaded it have been happy that they've downloaded it. It's been really a great resource to have for um both SAE, the students, and I think for all of the local organizers that we work with. Uh, of course, we did talk a little bit about the awards banquet earlier. Are there any other details? Yeah, yeah, just a few things. Um, the uh, awards banquet, again, it's being held back in the Gordon Fieldhouse, which is where we'll have uh, the tech inspection and design judging. Uh, we ask that teams not bring bags or backpacks into the field house. Uh, we are required to have security screening because of the size of the banquet. Uh, bags or backpacks just slow that down. Um, the, ba the banquet this year, it's interesting, we'll have uh, two co-sponsors, uh, General Electric and Magna Powertrain. Um, so we thank them for their generous support uh, to make the, the banquet possible. 
Right now we're planning on having chicken and there will also be uh, vegetarian options. It is all you can eat. Um, and usually we end up with extra food. So that's another reason to come. It's a, uh, it's a lot of food. It's good food and uh, it's a lot of fun. And again, we'll have our famous ice sculpture there. If you haven't seen that, stop by and see it. So at the banquet, uh, since this is the last event, we will be presenting the uh, Mike Schmidt Memorial Award. And that is presented to the uh, top performing team in North America. Uh, the competition, from my understanding, is pretty close this year. Uh, I believe Michigan is in the lead right now. Uh, that's going to be presented by uh, Mr. Michael Schmidt, who was the father of Mike Schmidt. And for those of you that don't know about the uh, Mike Schmidt Memorial Award, it was established back in uh, 2001, I believe, uh, in memory of Mike Schmidt, who was a founding member of the resurrected uh, RIT Baja team. He was only a couple months away from graduating uh, had gone home for spring break and was involved in a fatal car accident. So Mike's dream was to have the team participate at all the North American events. And back then it was uh, Mini Baja East, Mini Baja Midwest, and Mini Baja West. And uh, Mike really was the force behind getting the RIT team to participate in all three of those events. Um, and again, the Mike Schmidt Award is is essentially the North American uh, championship and what makes it even more special this year is the host uh, RIT are the defending North American champions of the Mike Schmidt Memorial Award. So uh, again, another reason to attend the banquet. From the tech inspection side, you know, be sure to take a look at the latest tech bulletin. Make sure you have the tech sheets and in initial everything, no check marks and any questions from the rules put in rules request ahead of time. Excellent. And we did have a uh, great recap after the Tennessee event with uh, Joe Bat Witness of, of Tech Inspection about things that you guys saw out there, um, a lot of tips and tricks. So if you didn't uh, catch those going into California uh, for whatever reason, uh, that's out there in the podcast feed, which you can get to in that Baja SAE app as well. Um, of course, these events can't happen without volunteers. Uh, Marty, if people want to get involved with it, uh, what's going on with you guys out there? Well, it's a great question, Mike. Uh, these events do rely on hundreds of volunteers. We have a very strong local organizing committee, but there are still some key volunteer positions that we are trying to fill, uh, most notably sales and design judges and also course workers on dynamic days, which are Saturday and Sunday. If people are interested in signing up, and these people can be parents, they can be friends, uh, one of the things uh, that's a reward of volunteering is you get to go out on a course and volunteer, so you get a front row seat. Folks will need to go to www.bajasae.net and then uh, find our event and click on it. Uh, you might have to set up a, an account. It's a very simple process. Uh, we like, we collect uh, um, you know, emergency contact information, contact information for yourself. We don't share any of this information. It's just for the organizers to use. So again, uh, BajaSAE.net if you, if you want to volunteer. Now, what's key is if you are on a team, uh, be part of that team. Don't try to sign up as a volunteer. Uh, we have had some uh, teams, unfortunately, try to have members sign up as volunteers just to get an advantage for their team. That is not a reason to sign up as a volunteer. If you have a very large team and you can spare some folks to be event volunteers and that's all they do, then that's okay. Um, but we don't want to have teams sending members to sign up as volunteers just to get an advantage for their team. That is not okay. And it's been great to see a lot of faces that have participated in the past uh, uh, be at a lot of these events too. So it's really cool that community that happens there. Yeah, I, yeah, it's it's great. I, I know a lot of the national tech people uh, have been involved for years, including Jason and uh, Adam Hussman and some of the others, Mike Zeman. And what's interesting about the Rochester event is we were sort of the testing grounds for a lot of the advancement uh, in Baja competitions that other organizers are now using. So, and that was because our 
you know, old local organizing committees and in, included these, you know, people that are, that are now very active on a national basis. So I want to put a shout out to them. Thank you. And also a shout out to SAE. Thank you for, you know, coming back to Rochester. We enjoy hosting. And I also want to give a, a big shout out to the local organizing committee, uh, my co-organizer, Steve Skursky and Marco Lamb, who's our logistics coordinator. She's done a fabulous job um, and other, other folks as well. So hope to see you soon in Rochester, you know, safe travels. And we hope you all have a, a very successful event. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time uh, to give us a little bit of a heads up of what's going on going into the Baja Rochester event uh, this month, ending out the season. Thank you again, Marty, Steve, Andrew, and Sarah for joining us here on the show. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Please uh, take a look back if you have not caught some of the uh, discussions we've had going into these events. A lot of tips and tricks out there to be better at your Baja. And uh, until next time, please stay safe out there. Thanks for listening to Baja SAE Shop Talk. As always, we want to hear from you, so email BajaSAE at SAE.org. The show notes for this episode, as well as all others, can be found at www.BajaSAE.net slash podcast. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next episode.